Hi, this is Queen Spring and welcome to the ultimate. I need a little more, I need a little more energy. Yo, this is Queen Spring and welcome to the ultimate. I had to be a little more realistic. A little more realistic. Alright, tell you, I'm Queen Springer and this is the ultimate tutorial for isomers. By the time you're done. Isomers better don't come for CXC because by the time you're done with this tutorial, by the time you're done with this tutorial, shell it. Yeah, I feel it now. I feel it now. Alright, so the first thing you need to know. Definition of structural isomers. Now there are other kind of isomers, eh? But for CXC, all you need to know is structural isomers. They're not optical and stereo isomers and them kind of fancy things, cis strands. So the definition is organic compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. That's the key. Same molecular, different structural formula. There's a next definition that you need to know in the syllabus. The definition of structural isomerism. This is the if they want structural isomerism, just do something like this way. The occurrence of two or more organic compounds with the and you just finish it off with the so you know same thing now. This is the occurrence, this is the actual thing. This is the occurrence of it, this is the actual thing. Alright, let's move on. So structural isomerism comes about by two different ways. So the first way is branching, the second way is changing the position of the functional loop. Branching changing the position of the functional loop. Let's go through some concepts in both what branching means and what this means. Yeah, don't watch how you're playing with these people, you know, the other day I slice my finger on one of these people's. That is burn. Uh, and you might see me sweating because I take off the AC. And it's in the day and it's real hot. So, um, it's literally sweat and blood I paint into these videos, you know, sweat and blood. So, yeah, don't make sure I'm in you, okay? Let's talk about the concept of isomers. Isomers are like this. If I give my son these, Lego blocks to play with and I say go and build something with your life Chavi and he decides to come up with this we'll call this the original structural isomer if I tell him to come up with something else and he does something like this well I will say that is an isomer I will say Chavi you're ready for CXC um, chemistry boy this style of isomer here is actually the branching the, you know this came from here and we just let him go there um, it didn't stay but you catch the idea right now, if he came up again with something like this, the neighbor put on start back back in again. Anyhow, so if he comes back with something like this, you notice the purple born in the middle. That's an next isomer. That's different than the first, the original, the OG. So this here is a functional style isomer because if we consider the purple to be like a functional group, like the OH. This was the first, but if we move the position of the functional group, that's an isomer. Alright, so let me stop playing with Lego blocks and let's look at it in terms of carbon. Alright, so look at this example. This is an alcohol. How many um, carbons do you have there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 carbons. How many hydrogen? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10, 12. 12 hydrogen. How many oxygen? 1. Why did I put 0? 1. Alright, so the molecular formula for this dude will be C5H12O yeah that is him so so this will be like the original isomer let's form a branch isomer alright so this is like a branch chain isomer I just took the CH3 that was here cut him out send him here onto the chain so he's attached to the second carbon branch chain alright let's get the next one Alright, this is another isomer. This came about because I moved the functional group down here, the OH, the hydroxyl group, and I put them here, OH, on the second carbon. Now, this is not the fourth carbon. I always come from the side that will give it. We'll talk more about this later on in the video. Now, notice obviously in all the isomers, we still had the same amount of carbon, same amount of hydrogen, same oxygen, so therefore we still had the same molecular formula. But the structure was different, so the structural formula will be different. That's what an isomer is about. Remember him? This is the little hydrogen carbon key that I just cut out, out of the carbon that was next to him and I, and I send him around and I attach him to some other carbon. This is like a piece. This is, this is a piece of hydrocarbon. There's a name for this, you know. 
Alright, so the name for this is methyl. So the name for this is methyl, but if we were to cut off a bigger piece of the hydrocarbon tail, we would call this ethyl. So methyl, ethyl, propyl, these are the alkyl groups. You get the idea, right? Knowing the names of these little pieces will come in useful for when you're naming the isomers. So let's go to naming isomers. When I go through naming isomers, we'll go through some of the concepts of isomers. We'll get to see the common mistakes that students make and we'll understand isomers a little more. Alright, so I don't know if you're all hearing this in the video, but my neighbor start a hard reggae session here. So let me go and get chemistry and reggae, right? Alright, so let me name these fellas here. This will be like the original one. We just count up how much carbons we see there. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six, so you know, know you're dealing with hex. And that is alkenes, that, that nothing fishy there, so we just call it hexane, we just call it hexane and then next one. So if you notice what went on here, in this one we still have the same 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 carbons, same amount of hydrogen too. Oh by the way, you know, this one, I didn't put in the hydrogen, that's just to make it easier in the video, but so everywhere you see a dash, there's supposed to be a hydrogen, but it'll kind of take away from the um, concept of what I'm showing you here so I just leave all the hydrogen and it makes it easier in the eye as well but for CXC when you're doing your isomers make sure you put in your hydrogen but for now we'll just eat our hydrogen mm -hmm. alright back to this all these fellas have the same molecular formula eh? alright so if you want to name this we need to start off with the longest chain let's run along here one two three four five this way has five and this way has four this is a continuous flow so you need to look for the longest continuous flow you understand? You wanted five wins, so the root of this name is pent. One, two, three, four, five. Pentene, right? Still dealing with the alkene here. So this is pentene. But we need to include this guy. And remember, this is a methyl group. And we are putting it on which one? One, two, three, four, five. We are putting it on the third carbon. So we'll call this three methyl. Shocks, don't name this wrong like, don't spell this wrong like me and put L before Y, Y before L. So, 3-methyl, M-E-T-H-Y-L is the correct spelling, pentane, 3-methyl pentane. Alright, so it's because it's on the third carbon, if we were to count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we are, put, we are putting it on the third carbon, so 3-methyl pentane. Alright, now what will happen if I take this and put it here on the... What looks like the fourth carbon. You know this, we don't call that four methyl pentane, we'll actually call that two because we'll have to count the chain from this way. You always count any chain from the way that will give you the smallest number first for the group that you're looking at. I hope you understand what I mean by that. All right, let's check it out here. So after getting a longest chain, you might be tempted to say one, two, three, four. You shouldn't. You should start from counting from here. One, two, because the real action starting here. So you want to you wanna hit the action. You want to hit the action where the branching is occurring as fast as possible. So one, two, three, four. So all right, so it's four, so you know we deal with butte, right? Because remember proper history, so butene. So that so the foundation of this name is butene. Man pulling out all the classics, all the classics. Just now you're sitting a heavy buff. Alright, let's go back to the chemistry. Alright, so the longest chain on this one looks like about here. So, well, you can get a chain, so, so it don't matter. Alright, so the longest chain on this one, let's go one, two, three, four. Alright, so four. Um, there's a methyl group here and there's a methyl group on three. So, because there are two, we will say, um, oh, we didn't done it. Alright, so after you count this, you will say two. And there's a next one and two, so let's say two, two, dimethyl. I'm gonna make sure I spell this right this time, methyl butene. All right, so I already named the longest chain here. So there's a carbon and there's a methyl group on two and there's a methyl group on three. So let's just call this a two, three, dimethyl. And it's still butene because it's four. All right, so I hope you catch the hang of the alkanes. Let's try the alkenes. Alright, so the molecular formula of this one is C4H8. This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's butene. And it's uh, the, the double bond is touching the first carbon. So if you want to actually name it, it's isomer name. This will be but 
one in one in and there's another way we can actually name this so you can just say one butene one butene all right so there's a dash here instead um this one so you catch the hang of it this one is touching the second one on the chain one two three you always look for the smallest number right three four all right or you could count it this way whatever way floats your boat so this will be butte again and this will be butte who boy two right butte two in or if you want to go with this style and say two butene and this one this guy here will be there's a metal group and the longest chain is a prop three all right so this is prop one in right so if you want to be technical this will always be prop one in so you don't need to put it one so you could actually just put propene and label the methyl group so you could actually just write um what two methyl propene but if you want to be technical about it you'll write two methyl um prop one in yeah i hope you can make up my handwriting here sometimes i forget that all you need to read while writing and thing all right so let's try this one this one is alcohol c5 h12 o this is the molecular formula again molecular formula molecular formula remains the same for everybody but different structural formula right that's isomers all right so naming this one one two three four five so we're dealing with who by pent tunnel the OH is on the first carbon, so we'll say pentan one all catch young of that. Um you could just say pentanol, right? Because that that's that's like the first one like this is the OG. Oh by the way you can say one pentanol one dash pentanol. This one is on the third. When I count it this way, or I count it this way, one, two, three, four, five, it'll still be on the third. So I just go in the third, I just go with pentan triol or you know the next way you can name this how about you try to name this one remember if i i need to continue it to give me the smallest number so try and name this one and write the number in the um, comments what the hell are they name this one yes pentan um who are two wow right because it's on the second one one two i need to come from this way so i'll get the smallest number i'll give you all some questions at the end don't worry all right this is the end so name these isomers here, can you name them? And then try and do these questions, draw all the structural isomers of C5H12, that's the molecular formula, and then draw the isomers of this guy here. Let's see how many you can get out of these, and then try and name them as well. And why not try this number three question from CSEC last year on all we have covered so far. So take a look at this question and try and do it. Alright, so what's next in the series on organic chemistry? We're going to talk about hydrocarbons and then we're going to talk about the reactions of alkanes and alkenes and that will take us past the half mark in organic chemistry. We are nearly finished with organic chemistry when we reach here. So keep watching, see you next time.